Hey there and welcome to this video about recursion. So I thought I'd make a small demo sample video about uh, how recursion works. We've been talking a bit about the theory behind uh, recursion that it is something that calls itself but how can we make some functions or methods that actually use this approach and it's going to be rather simple examples here. We have a lot of cases where we will have to use recursion to uh, to not have too high time complexity if we need to solve a problem and we're using recursion in cases like Tower of Hanoi and also if we need to sort elements in an array it uh, can be uh, faster to do this using recursion than using normal iterative approaches. But the goal of this video is is mainly to see using some simple examples how it works and then we will compare it to traditional iterative approach using loops. So first Recursion. This means that a function or method calls itself. So the first example I want to show you here is a really simple example that basically prints out some amount of hello world, because we already know this probably. So if we make a function called public static void and uh, hello world, and then Let's provide an input parameter. How many times do we want to print out hello world? Then we can start out by having a system of print line where we have hello world. And so that's just, of course, we could easily do this just printing out hello world and then do this amount of time. One, it would print out hello world, but we would have to copy everything. So that is not so optimal. Uh, we have to add something to the algorithm here. So we're going to make an if clause here that will look at if uh, n is bigger than zero. Then we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is we will call the function itself. And what should we put it in here as the parameter because we can see hello world accepts a parameter of integer n. So we need to provide a number here. And if we put n here again, this means that we will run in an uh, infinite loop. So that is not so good. We can have an example of this just in a minute. But if we provide n minus one, then we will count down. Basically, we will go down with one each time we call it. So if we issue hello world, right, hello world, uh, and then five, for instance. Okay, so if we take a look at how this works out here, if we run the program. So we can see we get hello world five times. And uh, that is all good. So but we didn't use a loop here. We didn't use any for loop or while loop or any other. So how does it work that we are actually getting five hello worlds here because we're not printing out or calling the method five times. We're just running hello world with five. So we can see that this is using a really basic approach to recursion. It is just calling itself and then we are subtracting one from each of uh, each time we run the function. So it will go five and then four and three and two and one. And then at some point it will go to zero where uh, it, we, we get to this if statement here where it says if zero is bigger than zero and that is not the case because zero is equal to zero. So that would be false. And that means that we will stop running in this uh, function here and we will uh, exit from it. So normally in recursive algorithms, we have a base case here. And uh, this is when we are not doing any more recursive calls. That means that we have made um, a condition here that we're checking up against. And we can see that when we get to zero, this if statement will not be true anymore because uh, zero is not bigger than zero. So we will not go any further in here. And then it's just going to print out these five times. If we should make another example that will uh, maybe more visually write that we're uh, counting down, we could also write something like public static void countdown. And 
again we can have this n here that determines how many times should we run into this and we're using the the same approach here basically that we are uh, let's just rename this to counter maybe so we can write counter and then we can just make a normal system of print that will have the effect that we're not making a new line for every uh, time we write system of print so we can add to the same line okay so then we will have this if statement again here and if counter is bigger than zero then we have this recursive uh, call here and we can see this as the base case here where we're just printing out and then if we have uh, the case that it is bigger than zero we will call the function so we write countdown and then we will write counter and then we need to make sure that eventually we go to this base case and nothing more so we have to make sure that at some point in this algorithm we will not enter this anymore so we have to take away we have to subtract one so eventually we will this if, if statement will be false and we will exit from the method because we always need to to exit from the method otherwise we will have a stack overflow or something because the method will run infinite so let's see what happens here if we run this function now let's just uh, write let's just write here countdown and take five Okay, so we can see that we get this uh, printout of five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So we have the countdown, but how does it actually work? We should make some debugging or some comments here about how this algorithm works. We can see that to start with, we're going to run the function countdown with the parameter of five. We did this in the main method here. So initially we go with countdown five, so there will be five in here. So we're printing out the value of five and then a space. Okay, so then we go to the if statement. And we have five in here and five is bigger than zero. So we're going to recursively call the function again with five minus one. Okay, so we go with five minus one. And then we enter the function again here. Now we have four and we're printing out. You can see we still have five and a space. And then we are printing out four here and then a space again. OK, and then we go to the if statement where it says is counter bigger than zero. Well, we can see it is four because we have four right now. So that means that we should call the function recursively. OK, so we call the function recursively and not download <laughs> uh, then we call it with four minus one so we enter the function again and then we have four uh, minus one that is three so we add to the print we have here and we print out three and then a space go to the if statement it is three that is bigger than zero then we recursive call the function again with three minus one So we can write here three minus one and we still have our usual print here. And then we get to the system of print line. We have three minus one. So that is two and then a space we add again. OK, so and the if statement still passes because we have two now that is still bigger than zero. So we call the function again with two minus one countdown and two minus one and we have our usual printout and now we go with two minus one so that is one here so we print out one and then a space there and we check the if statement one is still bigger than zero so we do yet another countdown here 
that has one minus one. And we still have our complete printout here. And then we will print out zero in the end. And then we will have zero and zero. Is that bigger than zero? No, it is not. That's the same. So uh, this if statement will be false. And that means that we will exit from the function. And that is the end of it. So this is the uh, sort of the debugging info for this recursive function here. OK, so uh, this is just a, <laughs> a quick uh, explanation of how recursive function work. And you can see we have base case. That will be the case when uh, we are not doing recursive calls anymore, when we are going back and exiting from the function there. And uh, then we have the recursive call, where we have to make sure at every time that we have to call the function with some parameter that is not the same as the original one. Because if we modify this uh, method here, that we are not subtracting one. We can try to see what happens if we run it. OK, so we can see here that we get a lot of errors and we have a, a really big printout of uh, exceptions or errors. And we can see 5555. And the reason why we get 555 is because we are not subtracting anything. So we're not getting any closer to our base case or the case where we are not calling it recursively. So we can see if we go to the very end of this uh, printout, it's a long way there. Over here we can see exception in thread Java lang stack overflow error. So this is what will happen if we if we never exit from the method. That we don't have this modification that we will eventually exit from this recursive call. Okay, so that is an that is one example of recursive methods. And you can use them for a lot more than just this. These examples they don't really serve any real programming purpose. It's just an uh, examples to show the inner workings of recursive functions. But if we take a look at some other examples, we can use recursion to calculate the factorial number. It means we have uh, three times two times one, where we also have this base case, and we are otherwise we're calling the function recursively and subtracting one. That is one case. We can also um, summarize uh, recursively. And again, we are subtracting from, uh, from n. And one of the more usable examples is also that we can write uh, algorithms that will allow us to search in an array. And this is binary search. And the reason why it's called binary search is because it is uh, dividing up the array and then it will call itself recursively on each portion of the array. So that means that we will not have big O of n. We will not have a linear time complexity. We will have the time complexity that is called uh, log n, logarithmic, that is better than n. So if we have a really large array, then binary search will be rather fast because it will use this approach called divide and conquer. That means that we will divide up the task in two, and then we will run the algorithm on each part. We also have a case where we can uh, use recursion to solve rather complex problems. And one of them is called Towers of Hanoi that has time complexity of 2 raised to the power of n. So that is a really heavy algorithm or it's a heavy problem to solve. And we can, we can see here that we're using recursion to solve this problem. OK, so I think this is it for this video about recursion. And I hope it makes sense uh, how that we call these function. Uh, using this value subtracted with something. So we initially step out of this call. Okay, so I uh, hope you make this work and have fun with this. Bye-bye.